Titans bringing you every angle of the storm. Start your free trial and be prepared all season. Currently in our area, 77 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 76. Chance of rain, 70%. Thursday, cloudy, a stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 88. Thursday night, overcast, slight chance of a rain shower. Low, 77. Here's our seven-day outlook. Guys, uh, waiting for this uh, handheld anemometer. Okay, it's a measuring tool for wind. It does all sorts of different measurements, but we are sitting here consistently uh, over 40 miles per hour. There's 45, 47, 48, 48, 6 was the highest that I've seen so far. Now remember, there's going to be a little error in this for a couple of reasons. Number one, there's raindrops hitting the little fan that gives us the wind measurement. That's one thing. And the other thing is, is I'm not holding this perfectly steady and calm because the wind is moving my arm around. But still, I mean, it, it's close when you're in, you know, 40 plus mile an hour sustained, 37, 42, you know, those are instantaneous gusts. So that's what we're looking at here in the northern eye wall. Obviously not the same animal that we had in the southern eye wall because that's what gave us uh, the jump to a category two as they found the hurricane was about 100, 100 miles an hour down there in that thing, which blows my mind. Pressure also went down to 972 millibars. So incredible stuff. Here's the deal. Uh, power outages are mounting now. I think we're up uh, over 17,000 statewide. Uh, parishes like Ascension, St. Mary. Now, I don't think St. Mary's is reporting in because there's no way we're still at 2,500. No way. I mean, we're into the eye wall. So for, for whatever reason, we're not getting that, uh, that report. Uh, you've got Iberia. You've got Plaquemines. Uh, you've got Jefferson Parish as well. All these southern parishes uh, over toward Lafayette as well are, are starting to be power outages as the wind and the rain goes up. Our rainfall rates, about an inch and a half uh, an hour. Pretty hard to measure it when it's coming down horizontal. And it stings, I can tell you that. So it's being whipped around by these tremendous winds that we've got. And out here... Uh, on, on Lake Pulor, you can see occasionally some splash up here with some of the waves. Some of this is all filled in. This was all green when we first got out here. The other thing you couldn't see, or, or actually, I'm sorry, you could see, was what was across the lake. And that is some of the pumps. That's some of the water that's coming into the lake. This is kind of a holding lake or a transition lake. And we're still with the wind this way out of the northeast. So our wind direction has not changed yet, all right? Which leads me to believe, I'm waiting for it to go uh, a little bit more subtly, but I don't think it's gonna do that or even calm down. So we, like Dr. Nab said, we may not get into the eye, we'll see. How would you like to be riding it out on one of these camps or houseboats uh, as they're called? The good news is, I mean, I don't know how much you can see of it, but they're moored down pretty good, all right? They're all tied to those pilings and whatnot, but really, uh, on a beautiful afternoon in Louisiana, especially getting into the fall season, um, this has got to be fantastic to be sitting out here, certainly on this lake. These things can obviously move around. Um, you know, houseboats can go from place to place. And I saw yesterday, even on the Atchafalaya River, they were bringing boats upriver, okay, to put them in the safe harbor and get them out of this wash tub uh, type stuff that we can certainly get. So the farther upriver we know, uh, the better certainly the situation can go. But guys, uh, you know, again, we're hoping for uh, a little bit of a break with this and getting into the eye wall. The big question is, we don't know if we're going to get one. If the, the one that we do get, if we even get one. Oh, I wish I had my anemometer open on that. We just got a huge gust. I mean, just because I've done this long enough, you know, there's 47, 48. I mean, we, 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 you know, that was probably a 60 mile an hour gust. And that's, you know, sometimes that's all it takes is to go from 47 to 60, and that, you know, takes a tree down. And remember how wet it's been down here. 
So all of these, you know, trees, even though they're cedar and they're used to being in a, in a wet, marshy area, um, now it's just been so soaked this year. And when you go from a drought like we had last year to a flood situation like we had this year with so much rainfall, that is not healthy for a tree or the roots. So you actually weaken the tree and you weaken its ability to stay in the water. So we may see more power outages just simply as a result of the overall conditions, uh, Dr. Nab, that we've seen in the past couple of years. Yeah, and, and Jim, a, a couple of uh, you know, conventional observation sites have been uh, both just north of you and just south of you not long ago reporting gusts to 60 miles an hour. So um, you're, you're in the ballpark, definitely. Uh, and again, you still have a chance with Morgan City being in this zone right here to get into the western part of the eye wall briefly as the center may be about to go over a little hammock area there uh, south of Morgan City. That might be where landfall of the center uh, is close to. And this area, this line, this gray line right here is the dividing line between winds going away and toward the radar. So that's kind of a pointing arrow to where the center is. So it's not long from coming ashore. But the other thing that's not long from coming ashore are some of these supercells. we got to watch one just off of Dauphin Island and the flood risk. Morgan City and Franklin on Long Highway 90 under a flash flood warning. All right, let's run that again. Geico has fast fare claims 24-7 right on the Geico app. To file a claim, just tap. Just tap right here to upload pictures, customer. Try getting on a first name basis. Sure. Vicky. To track your status, just click. Super easy. They're connecting with the mannequins. You're doing great, everyone. Oh, you're a pro. Scroll, tap, scroll, ouch. Oh, I'm cramping. Yeah, we've all been there. For savings and service, get more with Geico. I overdid it. Like a showboat, I just overdid it. Listen, I might not be a relationship expert, but I do have some hacks. They say, Warren, well, what's the secret to a long, sustained relationship? It's Blue Chew. 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 Blue Chew, baby! Blue Chew is an online subscription-based service that sends these affordable tablets directly to your home. No one even has to know. Except for me. But I'm not going to tell anyone. Did you know that people everywhere are recommending GoodRx? My doctor told me about GoodRx to help us save money on our meds. And my daughter told me about it. I take a lot of prescriptions. GoodRx helps me keep up. My neighbor showed me the app. To help me save on my kids' allergy pills. Americans everywhere are sharing the savings. Uh, dropping off a prescription? Great. Another good reason to check GoodRx. What will you do when the power goes out? Power outages can be unpredictable and inconvenient, but with a Generac Home Standby Generator, your life goes on uninterrupted because you'll have power when you need it the most. The number one thing to prepare for is extended power outages. Don't make it so hard on yourself. Have a Generac Home Standby Generator. And special financing and low monthly payment options are available. Call or go online now to request your free quote. Power your life with Generac. All right, drinks are up. Come on. Oh, yellow. Didn't pass the tissue test? Buckle up. Whoa! There's toothpaste white, and there's Crest 3D White Strips white. Whitens like a $400 professional treatment. Prepare for a nonstop smile. Crest. There is nothing like a Wendy's Frosty. It's cool. It's creamy. It's only a dollar right now. Wait, what? The one and only Frosty is a buck? Gotta be Wendy's. I have COPD because I smoked, so I have to pace myself. My tip is, if you're having people over for Thanksgiving, start cooking in October. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW.
This delectable Nor Ramen noodle recipe will put an end to your drive through dinner rituals. Throw that Nor bouillon in that tasty combo of delightful carrots and the rich touch of bok choy. Make your own Nor taste combo. It's not fast food, but it's so good. Guys, in the northern eye wall of Francine now, and it looks like, you know, from where we are in Morgan City, okay, which is down here uh, uh, on uh, Lake Poulor, all right, which is a holding lake, essentially, for all the water uh, out and through here. There's a lot of water that surrounds us. So a lot of this is, is holding lakes and bays and bayous. Uh, it certainly looks like we are going to get into some semblance of this eye. Uh, but the big question is when. And we're, we've kind of gone through a, a good bit of the teeth here. We've been seeing gusts in the 60s. I don't think we've gusted a hurricane force, but again, remember, I'm only one point you know, in Morgan City, and there's other areas uh, that are certain dealing with the convected elements and, you know, some of the towers that are associated within this island. Now, there's another gust of 60 right there, right there. That's a big gust. Of course, the, the, the one time I didn't bring my anemometer out. Uh, either way, you can see it flow across here. Even, even the water, okay, from the rainfall, uh, and this is a combination of fresh water and waves that have overlapped here. Uh, you can see we've got waves even on the water that's sitting here in this parking lot, which is pretty incredible. So we're in this. Uh, again, power outages continue to mount across the state of Louisiana uh, as the, you know, the northern eye wall comes in through. It's a big eye. It's going to continue to move north. And, you know, we're not too far, I would think, uh, from a landfall. The problem is, is even when we get into the break of this, You've still got a long way to go until you get the center coming ashore. That's when you get the landfall. It's when the center comes ashore. And that may be enough time for it to jog a little bit to our east again. All right? So that's what we're going to be dealing with. Again, guys, still dealing with this eye wall here. Winds have been sustained 40, 50 miles per hour at times, and certainly gusts uh, that have been over 60. And that is taking its toll uh, on St. Mary's Parish, on Ascension Parish, on Iberia. We also got horrific rainfall rates here uh, where we're talking about one to two inches an hour. Pretty hard to measure this, obviously, with it coming down horizontal. You know, it, it's kind of amazing if you've ever been on a, a, a beach where it's a really windy day and the wind starts blowing the sand around, that's what it feels like just holding my hand out like this. It feels like I'm getting, you know, kind of a, a, a derma abrasion uh, with the stinging of the raindrops because they're being, you know, windblown at 40, 50 miles per hour with occasional gusts uh, even higher than that. So, you know, it's getting to be that time where we're going to go the next 15, 20 minutes potentially. Do we start to see a little bit of a calming here getting into that eye? Uh, yours truly, and speaking on behalf of my crew, I'm sure uh, that would be very much appreciated. But for now, we are into the teeth of France. Seen. And even as a, you know, Category 2 hurricane, you know, one, and, and a northern eye wall that's been void of, of, you know, at least hurricane force gusts here, or they've been, you know, very few and far between, uh, we'll take a break. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be happy to have that for you. Legs are getting a good workout here as we have to stand on edge and, and just kind of hold ourselves. Either way, uh, power is out. Uh, as we've heard, we've got landfall. We, where, where is it? You want, to get, you want to bring in? We got a landfall. Uh, I, I'm not, not exactly sure where it is, but it's not too far from me, I can tell you that, uh, down to my south. There's a lot of little smaller areas uh, before you actually come ashore, little, little small towns uh, where this may have shore. Terrebonne Parish is where it is. Power outage is obviously preceding that. They went through the northern eye wall, and now they're into that center. So they're past the center uh, in Terrebonne Parish, which is right down on the bayou in through here. So hopefully we get that break. Uh, we'll see. Either way, we've got a landfall of Francine. So from this point on, um, more than likely it should uh, weaken. But it's going to take a moment. Again, this is a large high, and it's going to take a while for this thing to wind down. And right now we're still getting gusts. We're still in it uh, with winds gusting to 60 miles per hour. Uh, guys, I hope you had the time to make some jambalaya today for the family. And you guys are all hunkered down at home. If you still got power and you're watching us, just enjoy your evening. Let this thing go on through. And believe it or not, what you're seeing right here, we're going to have the sun coming out tomorrow. How about that? What a change. All right, Paul Goodlow. Uh, Paul, I think in recorded history, um, a very good friend of mine sent me this. Only five times that we had an eye in New Orleans Parish. Five times in the, in the lifetime, which is pretty amazing when you think about Louisiana's hurricane history. 
This could be another one, buddy. This could yep. be another one you're going to be there for. It, it. could be. And it's coming up later on this evening, probably right around the time the sun sets that I could come over here. But before the eye gets there, we're going to have some of the stronger bands that have been rotating around where you are, Jim, in Morgan City, kind of rotating here in New Orleans. And that's where the strongest winds have been. Our winds have been roughly gusting between 30 and close to 40 miles per hour, just getting that tropical, the minimum tropical storm force wind in terms of the gusts here. And the, the rain, we're into a, a slightly lighter kind of push of rain, but we see on the radar some of the yellows, some of the oranges, those are rotating our way. They're about 30 miles away. We're about, uh, say, 60 to 80 miles away from that center of Francine now. And as it comes this way throughout the evening, we'll see those orange and red bands start rotating this way. And that's where you have those two, maybe three inch per hour rainfall rates coming on through and where the strongest winds are. It's like Jim has been dealing with that 60, 70 uh, potential uh, wind gusts rolling that way, that is going to cause more power outages. That's a big concern across all the, the, the pump stations here. 90 of 99 pumps are operational, and they do have power for the city. They have backup power as well, so that's the important part. When we get those heavy rain bands coming on through, they can still pull that water out here. Again, an inch an hour is about the max they can deal with. But Mother Nature can easily overwhelm that. It's done that before, just in summertime thunderstorms here. We do see still a few people out and about here. There's Most places are closed. There's a few shops are open, but we're still seeing a little bit of traffic. Typically, this would be kind of rush hour here along Canal Street. Not much traffic at all. We see more first responders and police uh, out here than uh, the general people rolling by. But there's still people who are still, you see a hurricane that happen to be, live, or visit New Orleans, they want to come out and experience, Jim, like, like we do, but we still have our fallback locations here. And still, the winds will be picking up, and we do know the, what you've been dealing with. We're going to see some winds like that come through here, but when you talk about these, these tall buildings here, we can get those maybe 70 to 80 plus mile per hour winds once we get 10, 20 stories right. off the street level. Jim? Paul, Paul, the other thing, too, for you is... You could go from literally being completely blocked from the wind, all right, to getting between two buildings where you actually have a funneling coming through. So that's another issue. It's not only, you know, up high, we know that overall, but even down on the ground, there's no question that we could see that wind funnel through there, and it's going to knock people off their street. And, you know, that's just something maybe you know, you'll be able to deal with later uh, and show us. But uh, it's amazing. You literally go from calm. I remember last time when I was in New Orleans, it was fun. I mean, these guys were behind me walking like there was nothing going on. And I was standing out in the wind tunnel because I wanted you guys to see that. But I would try to explain every time that I was in the wind tunnel. All right? It wasn't representative necessarily of the exact wind of the hurricane, but an acceleration that can happen uh, in between the buildings. And you don't need a hurricane for that. Just ask the folks in Chicago. Just ask the folks in New York or Boston. You get this Venturi effect, this funneling of the wind, where the wind has to accelerate to go through it. Um, if you've ever seen, you know, chemistry, where you have a Venturi tube, which is a tube that starts wider and shrinks at the end, the water has to go through it, or whatever the liquid is, faster at the end to get through it. Same thing with the wind, all right? Same thing with the wind. One thing's for sure, guys, uh, looking at the radar and certainly our position right now, it looks like we're close to being uh, into the center, but, but right, you wouldn't know it from standing out here. I mean, this is, you know, strong tropical storm force without question with gusts, maybe uh, even minimal hurricane. But either way, you can see how the water has come up both from the rain as well as from the lake uh, into this parking lot. We were told it does not flood. And, you know, that's another reason we're obviously hoping uh, that we stay into the eye. But right now, again, uh, heavy rain, wind, we're in the northern eye wall of this thing, and power outages continue to mount from Terrebonne Parish up through St. Mary. Wow. Gosh, you know what's wild? If you look at the radar right now, it looks like we're right at the edge. And I remember this last time when I was in Ian in Punta Gorda. It's right as you're at the edge. Sometimes you get these little vortices, and they can really whack you. They, they, it gets calm for a second, and then, it, then they can actually whack you. All right, uh, let's go back to the studio and Dr. Dab.
Yeah, Jim, it's still a, an open question whether or not you're going to get a break uh, from that northwestern eyewall because the center looks to be going between Morgan City and Homa. And I'll go ahead and bring up the, uh, the summary of the landfall because that has just happened within the last several minutes. The center of the hurricane crossing the coastline. That's the definition of landfall. It was in Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana, probably near uh, Little Hammock, that area. Uh, and that's uh, off to the south, southwest of Morgan City as a category two hurricane. That's the operational estimate. Max winds at 100 miles per hour, the pressure of 972. Another pretty large hurricane making landfall. Barrel was relatively large when it made landfall in Texas. These sheared systems as they're coming ashore uh, can often be horizontally large and it will remain a tropical cyclone until tomorrow and then become post-tropical as a rainmaker. But it's moving relatively quickly and so that's good to get the system in and out, but it also allows the wind intensity to ma be maintained pretty far inland. So some damaging uh, hurricane and tropical storm force winds going all the way under southern Mississippi. And here's that trough that has been steering it and shearing it. So it is kind of lopsided. And we also have this frontal boundary off to the east that all of this is going to combine for a significant tornado threat for the next several hours uh, into the overnight. But the center has come ashore in here, and that's where the heaviest rains are, where all, got all the flash flood warnings. But we've got some nasty bands and this nasty supercell off of Dauphin Island that keeps trying to get closer and closer to land, just a sign of things to come. And the hurricane force winds heading farther inland, so we could easily get hurricane force winds, uh, at least in gusts in New Orleans, along with the rain-induced flooding and the storm surge. Saltwater flooding could in some places combine with rain-induced flooding, so you definitely want to be off the roads. And then there's the tornado watch that goes till 11 o'clock, and there's another tornado watch probably going to be uh, issued farther to the east of there. Look at the wind shear. The low-level surface winds like this, but a few thousand feet up, they're like this. So that change of wind shear with height, Jackie, is going to make that northeastern quadrant along mm -hmm. that frontal boundary perhaps even more tornado producing than usual. Right. It's an area we're watching uh, for a new watch to get issued. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen that yet, but we're definitely getting the rotation yeah. offshore. And boy, it's going to be a close shave um, whether or not Jim gets into that eye or not. He may end up staying in that eye wall because it's interesting, you know, this huge eye, um, the orientation of it is sort of changing just a little bit. It's almost a little closer in. It's a little bit smaller than it was earlier, especially on that northern eye wall. You're looking live there in Morgan City right now where we've seen the strongest wind gusts around 62 miles per hour. And there you can see in Theriot, Louisiana, John Humphreys um, providing this view. And you can really see how the wind is just pushing that water. You know, the storm surge flooding is increasing now, especially just to the right of the center of where the storm is coming in. And then Cocodre, Louisiana, as we look live there as well, clearly looking at storm surge flooding here and the rain coming down uh, very heavy. So we want to talk a little bit more about this tornado threat. We do have a tornado watch that's in effect for all of southeastern Louisiana and southern parts of Mississippi, places like Biloxi and New Orleans, Morgan City, um, Baton Rouge, just to the east of you where the watches are, are, are in effect. So it's that right front quadrant of landfalling tropical cyclones where we have the best chance of these tornadoes. And whenever you see these little lines beginning to develop some of those feeder bands, a lot of times that's where we get the most rotation. And you can see kind of some suspicious nature on a couple of these, especially to the one to the south of Dauphin Island. We've been tracking this thing for quite a while right now as it continues to get closer and closer towards land. It remains offshore. It really broadened out quite a bit compared to what we were looking at earlier. So that's something that we need to continue to monitor as it gets closer to off Dauphin Island and then gets a little bit closer towards Mobile Bay. Remember, water spouts turn into tornadoes when they move their way over land. So the heaviest of rain fall coming in here on the north side of the storm right now. That's where all the convection is, and that's where the heaviest of rainfall rates are. This is expected to weaken fairly dramatically once we get that big eye um, completely over land now. Now, notice there's still some uh, availability to identify that center here by 5 o'clock tomorrow morning as this moves north of Hattiesburg. Jackson, Mississippi could get in on some heavy rain, but you may end up being on kind of that west side of the storm here too. But look at this. Into the 
Panhandle, pushing over towards the Big Bend area. Those will be spots tom tomorrow that will be vulnerable for more of these tropical tornadoes. Bruin, I know you're taking a look at uh, some of the power outages. Those numbers have been growing. Yeah, just in the last, like, I checked 10 minutes ago, they were at 27,000. Now we're up to 42,000. The bulk of those are in St. Mary's and Terrebonne Parishes. Of course, that's where it made landfall. So between Homa and Morgan City, Louisiana, is where we're seeing the brunt of the worst conditions. Gus, easily in that 60 to 70 plus mile per hour range as of the last uh, updates. You can see here just outside of Morgan City, we got sustained winds out of the north northeast at about 45 miles per hour, gusting between 50 60 miles per hour. Some of the gusts here across New Orleans and southeastern Louisiana are in that 40 to 50 mile per hour winds, and those storms uh, or that those outer I wall bands are going to start working their way towards the New Orleans area here within the next hour or two. You can see how storm surge warnings are up and the water levels have come up to about three feet. We have some observations, though, uh, near landfall in places like Cocodry, where we've seen close to three plus feet of storm surge. And of course, this is near low tide, so that's helping us out a little bit. But that onshore push is continuing across southeastern Louisiana and into coastal Mississippi. People always say, it is what it is, until it isn't. Remember before AI when you had to type to search? And when you couldn't ask your phone to do this? Put these restaurants on a map. Huh. What about taking a photo and reimagining it? Man, remember when all phones pretty much did the same stuff? Until they didn't. Get the all-new Google Pixel 9 Pro phones at googlestore.com. With Claritin, relieving your allergies is a walk in the park. Get fast, all-day relief of your worst allergy symptoms, like nasal congestion. Live Claritin clear. And Doug. And if we win, we get to tell you how Liberty Mutual customizes car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Isn't that what you just did? Service! Stand back! Stand back. Time out. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. It started. It's the side hug. Tween milestones like this may start at age nine. HPV vaccination, a type of cancer prevention against certain HPV-related cancers, can start then, too. <laughs> for most, HPV clears on its own. But for others, it can cause certain cancers later in life. Welcome. Hi. Now, as the dad cab, it's my cue to help protect them. Embrace this phase. Help protect them in the next. <laughs> Ask their doctor today about HPV vaccination. Society fears those who are different. Get off of me! But not me. Am I crazy? What you're feeling is very real. Too many doctors treat symptoms, not people. I don't think this man is in a coma. He's in there. The key is to connect. If you can hear me, look up. Okay. Brilliant Minds, September 23rd on NBC and Peacock. Oh, yummo. Didn't pass the tissue test? Buckle up. Whoa! There's toothpaste white, and there's Crest 3D White Strips white. Whitens like a $400 professional treatment. Prepare for a non-stop smile. Crest. Why do couples choose a sleep number smart bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no, I'm always hot. Sleep never does that. Can I make my side softer? Can I make my side firmer? Sleep number does that. Your ideal firmness and effortless comfort all night. Can I help us sleep better and better? Please. Sleep number does that. Nine out of ten couples report better sleep. Save 40% on the Sleep Number Special Edition Smart Bed. Plus free home delivery when you add an adjustable base. Shop now at a Sleep Number store near you. Watch the Weather Channel for ongoing coverage of Francine. Get trusted updates only on the Weather Channel and the Weather Channel TV. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly Lights out. Good night. and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end.
end it at feedingamerica.org. Endurance, even better, you pick the mechanic you trust. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road, up to 20 years old. They cover a ton on the car. So, who's going to pay for your next car repair? You or Endurance? Act now for $300 off any plan. Plus, a full year of Elite Benefits, a $2,000 value, free, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-855-942-6188. Now, for a free quote. Currently in our area, 79 degrees under cloudy skies. Tonight, thunderstorms early, low 77. Chance of rain, 40 percent. Thursday, cloudy skies. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 88. Thursday night, skies clearing overnight. Slight chance of a rain shower. Low, 76. Here's our seven-day outlook. Channel TV app is keeping you ahead of the storm all hurricane season. Our goal is to keep people safe. Log in and experience local weather. Real-time radar, minute-to-minute -minute coverage. Waves are just crashing on the seashore. Top stories in our on-demand library. Interactive live chats with experts. And landfall cams bringing you every angle of the storm. No one covers hurricane season like the Weather Channel TV app. Start your free trial and be prepared all season. Taking a live look at Morgan City, Louisiana. This is a live view from our Storm Tracker Charles Peak, where you can see obviously a lot of horizontal rain and water collecting more and more on the roadway. So that is not the greatest idea to be driving through that water. You could end up getting stuck and in these tropical storm conditions, it is very unlikely that responders would uh, easily be able to come get you, if at all. So the winds themselves, the flooding rains, and in some places a combination of freshwater rain-induced flooding and saltwater flooding from storm surge and the increasing tornado threat are all reasons to be off the roads and in a safe place. The center of circulation came ashore here in Terrebonne Parish uh, within uh, the last uh, 20 minutes or so as a Category 2 hurricane. Morgan City and Homa have been in the northern eye wall and increasingly we're getting the winds picking up in New Orleans and Baton Rouge and some very suspicious cells just offshore as the tornado threat uh, is on the increase. Now, you've already got some gusty winds. Baton Rouge gusting to 38. Uh, the lakefront New Orleans gusting to 45, uh, gusting to 30 to 40 elsewhere in the city. And we've also got the flash flood problem along with these nasty cells uh, coming on shore. So here's the winds going away from the radar. Here's the winds going toward the radar as the center of circulation goes along this route, maybe in between uh, Morgan City and Homa. And then we've got this northeastern quadrant with here. There's been this really nasty supercell just offshore of Dauphin Island. Hasn't come on land yet, but there's more behind that. So that tornado risk is definitely on the increase. That's going to be a big, big problem. But we've already had flash flood warnings, Franklin and Morgan City until 9 p.m. local time. Homa and Chauvin under the warning until 7.15. And then the north northeastern eye wall, uh, even though it's starting to lose some of its definition, this is where the strongest uh, winds and heaviest rainfall on land are in the Raceland down to Galliano areas. A flash flood warning until 8 local time in New Orleans is just off the screen to the right there. So watch how the center of circulation could go very close to maybe just west of uh, New Orleans. So that's going to put New Orleans, the Mississippi coast, uh, the Alabama coastline, even the western Florida panhandle in the onshore flow site. And look at how 
discreet some of the cells could be. This could be a very significant severe weather, uh, especially tornado risk, overnight into tomorrow morning. And then the center goes through Mississippi, quickly weakening, losing its definition. But look at how the wind shear. So the blue lines are the uh, surface winds, and then a few thousand feet up, the winds are coming stronger out of the south-southwest. That change of wind shear with height is going to really cause that low-level wind shear to get all those cells spinning up. And with the sheared storm, we've got lots of deep layer shear to organize the storms. And tomorrow into the daytime in the afternoon in that far eastern portion of the storm, lopsided as it might be, Torcon's as high as two and three, Chris. So this is not just going to be a coastal event. All right, I want to take a, a live look here of John Humphrey's shot of storm surge and very heavy rain uh, impacting uh, the coastal areas of southeastern Louisiana. You know, places like Grand Isle, Cochrane, uh, Duloc, and Homa, Louisiana, all dealing with similar scenes, especially if you're right along the water. Some of that is over two feet deep in some cases, and thankfully we're not seeing many vehicles out. So hopefully everyone's in place and safe. Power outages have drastically risen over the last hour now that Francine has uh, come ashore. And we want to show you the eye. Notice it's pretty large. I mean, at you know, one point it was over 50 miles in length and kind of changing its nature. Notice those deep reds are starting to become more of that orange color here. And this cell right there where there's thunder and lightning, those are where you could have uh, some brief twisters or water spouts and also some very strong winds. And those aren't very far from the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So I want to walk through timing because some of the worst conditions are going to be now approaching the south side of New Orleans and coming into the south side of Lake Pontchartrain. We're going to be in those 50 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts for about the next two to three hours. And then we may even get into the eye here as conditions start to weaken. By that point, it's going to be kind of a messy eye, not going to be clear. Still going to have some strong winds. And remember, we're going to get a north to north westerly wind that could pile up some of that water there along the lake shore. We dry things out very quickly once the center pulls to our north uh, as dry air will filter back in. But some of the worst conditions here for not only New Orleans, but also here around places like Biloxi, Mississippi, are going to be later tonight after dinner from about 7 p.m. Central Time all the way through midnight. And you can see coastal issues as well. Even the severe weather risk in places as far east as Mobile and the Florida Panhandle. That's something we're going to be watching here pretty closely. In the meantime, take a live look here of some of the storm surge in coastal Louisiana. Okay, trainees, let's work on our fast and friendly claim service. Eyes on the phone now. Look alive, Drew.